it makes absolutely no sense to go to the Torah and to prove your religion from something that you already believe is corrupted. Absolutely. So if you're a Muslim, the word here is Mahamadim. So that, and that's where they're getting. So it sounds very similar. So they're going based on the sound. They're going based on the sound and Rather the root of the, the word. word. The, if it was Muhammad, yeah. it would be with the. It, it would be the real word you showed us. Exactly. The Quran claims that Muhammad is mentioned in the Torah, and Isaiah and the Song of Solomon's are not even the Torah. I don't think you guys sort of don't know how closely allied you are, but the, the videos are really nice that you put out. Yeah, uh, some of the more cinema, um, cinem, uh, cinematic, cinematic. Cinematic. That's the word yeah, I'm looking cinematic. for. Cinematic. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad. Um, so what what I wanted to talk to you about, um, and I understand that you've made it very clear that you're here to build bridges. You're not here to tear bridges down. You want to build bridges towards Muslims, uh, and, and you want to work towards. Um, peaceful relationship. So my aim in asking these questions, I will also be equally clear, is connected to the regular use, or I would say abuse, of the Hebrew scriptures by the Dawah team, in which they claim that Muhammad is actually named inside the Torah, yeah. inside the Hebrew Torah, the Tanakh and, Tanakh and the Torah. Um, so, a couple of places that they argue this is in Isaiah 42, in the very first few lines of Isaiah 42. Now, I'm aware that you can read Hebrew, or...? Yeah, I, I'm not fluent, but I can... Do you have it on your phone, like I, I've seen in the past? Mm -hmm. It's also in the they also do it in the Song of um, Solomon, and I think you're probably more familiar where they do that. Guys, let's go talk about because of the sound. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so. I don't mind walking a bit if you want to go a bit further as well. Like if you want to go behind the green, yeah. if, you go, if you go behind the green barriers, yeah. they'll yeah. block out the. So that we all, we'll go right way then. That way. If you go, but if you go over the green barriers, the green barriers will block out the sound of this. Okay. This has like horror. This thing here has a horrible air no, con. Here's here's better. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, the, in Isaiah 42, yeah. in the first few lines, yeah. we've had a Muslim say that Muhammad is mentioned there. Yeah. Now, you, 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 I take it you're pulling up the Hebrew right there. Just do it my way. And while you're doing that, I'll look at the next one that I often hear them use. Muhammad in the Song of Solomon. Right, so it's 516. Mm, just you found it? Why yeah, I just want to check something I've written on this before, just to finish my <laughs> Okay. came straight to your mind. <laughs> straight on point. All refreshed. Sure. 
So in Isaiah 42, the first few verses, Muhammad's name is meant to appear. Now that you've got the Hebrew in front of you, can you see the name Muhammad? No, it doesn't. And what they are, there's, so I'm going to pull up the Hebrew. Yeah, if we can see it in the, the camera. So, go on. I'll show you first and foremost for the camera, I'll show you what Muhammad looks like in Hebrew. Yep. So you can, the viewers can see for themselves. Here you go, guys. Mentions. A lesson in Hebrew. I'd like to come and talk with you later on. Sure. Is it alright if I just finish this yeah, conversation yeah, sure. and then I'll come and find you? Oh, you're more than welcome to listen in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, go on. so show yeah, us. So it's a bit, actually, let me see if I can make that a bit. Um... Don't worry about the size, we can okay. zoom in. Okay. So, what you can see here, this word here. Yep. Muhammad. Mem vov mem. It's this. It's this. This is m. This says it's Muhammad. Yeah. Take your finger away. So yeah. Okay. Right. Got it. And now if we go to the Hebrew. Yeah. The Hebrew. This is the Hebrew of the Torah. This is the bit that the the, the Muslim Dawa team are so claiming. So you said forty-two. The first few lines. The first few verses of forty-two, where it says, uh, "Behold, my servant, my chosen, whom my soul desires. I have placed my spirit upon him. He shall promulgate justice to the nations. He shall neither cry nor." Oh, that sign of breaking reed. We can do a, a flashback. Let us do it for the first um, five verses, because I know it's within. Okay, uh, that's probably too see, many verses. Let me just see if I can see it anywhere in there. Yeah. No. no. Can we show the camera so that people can see that the, the name Muhammad doesn't so appear anywhere in first Isaiah? First and 14. foremost, to see where we are. Yeshayahu Isaiah. So that's the Hebrew name for Isaiah, chapter forty-two. So most say it's verse one. So go on. What does it? So, what's the word that they're claiming so is Muhammad? There is no word that they're claiming is Muhammad. There, there is no word there at all right. that looks anything remotely like the word Muhammad. None. There's. I, so I don't know what they're talking about. I can. Yeah. yeah. So 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 um, the Dawa team are, are peddling misinformation about yeah. that verse. As far as I can see. That's fine. That's um, fine. No, that's I mean, uh, that's that, where he's, he, that's he, he, he reads. No, no, I, so I, I haven't yeah, been involved in any of the previous anyway. conversations. Yeah. I'm just saying the word Muhammad, yeah. or no word like Muhammad, yeah. appears in 42. And we'll, we'll do a, a flashback. One. This was from a debate that I had with Honest Muslims. Oh, it says Ahmed. It says Ahmed. It okay, so can you show me in the Old or the New Testament where it says Ahmed? Well, you highlighted it before. It says, uh, you know, many people uh, say Isaiah 42, yeah. verse 1. Yeah. Now in the Hebrew, what we say is um, whom I delight is the translation. Yeah, but when you actually look at the Hebrew, the word doesn't actually translate to that in English. It actually translates to A T M H M C or something. Like that. I think you're mi mixing up the song, uh, the, no, 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 no. the song of songs, with Isaiah 42. These are two different passages. No, no, I'm talking about Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42 says the word Akmi. Says the word Hebrew. Can you Isaiah 42? You no, I know. Of course, I don't have it. Well, uh, okay. So, it does, no, in the translation, it says to whom I'm, whom I delight. Whom has no Isaiah forty-two. Okay. Behold, my servant, whom I uphold. Uphold. All right. Well, okay. The translation I was reading says delight. You're saying you're saying this in the Hebrew is Akhmet. Yes. So the next one that they claim where Muhammad appears is in um, the Song of Solomon five sixteen. Let me just check something because I believe there is a word that is similar to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, um, I've heard the, the discussion points. Is it not necessary to, to talk with a Muslim? Like, who knows this stuff? Um, well, we're, we're just fact checking at this mm. moment in time. So that's all this, this video is about. Ow. All right. Yeah, yeah, we're just fact checking. So. Muslims constantly make this argument that Muhammad, the name, appears in yeah, the Torah. I've heard it. I have access to a Hebrew speaker here who's got the Hebrew in front but of him. But is he that knowledgeable to answer your question? Well, I'm, I'm, if he can read Hebrew, I'm sure he can spot the name. No, but then we call people scholars, isn't it? So, no, so there is no, I'll just clarify, Mo. There is no rabbi alive today that believes that Muhammad is mentioned in the Torah no. or in the Torah. My point is not that. Yeah. My point is when if somebody Sorry, has a bro. question about something, 
he should go to the authority. Bro, bro, bro with respect, assumptions. with respect. Um, no, I'm sorry, I'm we, sorry. We, we just want to, yeah. we just want to, we just want to cut to the facts. Oh, they're not, no, they're not facts. And we've got the, Bob, the Torah Bob, here. Bob, Bob, Bob. Uh, bro, I've said that I will have to A Jew and a Christian talking about Islam. Come, come, come. Come and speak with you, please. Well, each one of these has actually come up on a page, which I recommend all the most watching. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I apologise. I thought we were far enough away that you could just talk quietly. So it was five. So 516. So they, they again claim that Muhammad is there. So go on. Next. So again, this is the word here. So one of the things you have to understand about the Arabic and the Hebrew languages are they are very closely related. Yeah. Someone who speaks Hebrew can understand a lot of words in Arabic. In the Quran, it says that someone who believes in the, the day of judgment, which it calls Yom Al Din. Yeah. Um, in Hebrew, the same term is Yom Hadin. The only is, um, differentiation is Al versus Ha for, mm. for the word the. Yeah. Um, similarly, you have words like Tahara, pure like Sadaka. These are all Hebrew words originally. A bit, so like, it's, a bit like English and German and English and Danish. There's a lot of words that I hear in Danish that I recognize in English. And I can also get a kind of gist in German. Um, well, I say a kind of gist. I, I hear words that I recognise and understand without actually studying the language because they are so similar to the English. And so, uh, as an example, the name Abdullah yeah. means um, servant or slave, more accurately, slave of God. Um, in Hebrew, Allah is one of the names of Hebrew, yeah. and Ebed is slaves. Um, and so you have Ebed, Ebed, depending whether you're Syrian or not, you'll pronounce that word slightly different. But you have the same language. So you have a name that exists in Arabic, which yeah. is very similar to Hebrew. So you have to understand before Muhammad came along and um, introduced Islam to the world, yeah. I believe he was already called Muhammad. Is that is that fair? I, I assume... It was called... It was called um... Before what? Sorry. So I, I, I'm asking a question. Did was Muhammad? Did Muhammad become Muhammad when he became Islam? No, no, Muslim no. He, or was, did he was no Muhammad when he was a pagan. He so was called Muhammad. Is that, that's my understanding. Yeah, yeah, that's so the my name predates well. Islam to begin with. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't know what the root of that in in Hebrew we call it a shoresh, or each word has a root. He was never and, a pagan. and from so it's, so from going, that from going. from that root you have consonants. So yeah, can, can I, my friend, stop my being friend, rude, please, please, please. Stop being rude. Um, sorry. From those consonants, many other words will be formed. So shalom, which means peace. Shalem means complete. And so you'll have words which interrelate. And so the, the shadesh, the, the root of, um, of Muhammad in Arabic and Hebrew, I assume it's the same, will have multiple meanings. And in Hebrew, the, and I'll show you here in the text, yeah. the, the word here is machamadim. So yeah. that, and that's where they're getting. So it sounds very similar. So they're going based on the sound. They're going based on the sound and Rather the root of the, the word. word. The, if it was Muhammad, yeah. it would be with the. It would, it would be, be the real word you showed us. Exactly. It would. So to, to see, I'm going to show you the two words again. They're slightly different words. Yeah. But they share the same shor the shoresh. Yeah. And Muhammad's name will have come from the root of this word. Now in Hebrew it means um, lovely or desirable. Yeah. Um, in Arabic, before Muhammad was called Muhammad, it will have had a meaning. That word, because most names yes, have absolutely. meaning. Absolutely, like like my own name, my own real name, which I nearly just said. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, you've already got this, but as you as you can see, it's spelt completely different here. Yeah. There's a there's a vav here. So yeah, take Muhammad, away, so we can. Yeah, Muhammad rather than Muhammadim. Right. Um, and so if the Torah was coming to prophesize or the, the Tanakh was coming to prophesize about Muhammad, yeah. you would assume it would be very direct and it would actually name the name yeah. rather than alluding to the verse which ran in context, context makes no sense. And actually, if it's a verse which is praising God, yeah. which many people will read it that way, by ascribing Muhammad to that name, you're actually partnering Muhammad with God yeah. and saying they're interchangeable, which for a Muslim is very problematic because yeah. you're not allowed to make partners with Allah. Absolutely. And and the the, the uh, as I understand it, the I mean, because the false friends exist in other kind of languages. Um, I'm trying to think in terms of a false friend, because I know Spanish and English, 
like, and I am literally now just trying to find a false friend. Two words that sound the same but are com used completely differently in the, se in the two different languages. And the only one that jumps to mind, so it's quite a poor example I will accept, but it illustrates the point that I think the brother is trying to make, is the word amiga. In Spanish, amiga means my girlfriend or a girl that is a friend, yeah? Whereas amiga in English is a proper noun to an actual computer called the amiga. These words sound identical, but in English it's a proper noun, and in Spanish it's not a proper noun, it is a uh, objective. It is an objective. So, so <coughs> is, that, is that what you're describing here? That these words sound the same, but really are different? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So, if you, you, similarly, if you fight, you'll find names in Hebrew which will relate to other gods yeah. in pagan society. It doesn't mean that those pagan gods are found in the Torah, it's yeah. the commonality and the similarity of language. And Hebrew and Arabic are very, very similar. Is there a Hebrew word, is there a Hebrew word uh, that means mouse or to destroy or something that's very similar to Akbar in Arabic? So that's, yes. Uh, what, what's the Hebrew word? So there? mouse, I believe, is Akbar. I believe, Akbar. But, yeah. Akbar. I just want to check that though. Yeah, my please check it. If it's all right, um, we'll, we'll, we'll fact check him while he's studying because I never know when I'll get to speak to this guy again. So, and yes. while he's doing that, yeah, go on. So here's, so here's so, the word. And it says Akbar. Yeah. So Zoom I, in. I no, he, he oh, needs he to zoom in. He needs to zoom in. Yeah, just hold so it. We'll zoom in. This one here. Yeah. Akbar. And it's pronounced Akbar. Yep. Right. Akbar. So every time, if we if we use the phonetic false friend logic of the Dawa team, every time, and, and therefore every time we hear something that sounds like Muhammad, it must be Muhammad, then every time we hear the word Akbar, we must assume it means mouse. Now, obviously, this is nonsense. This is not the yeah. point the brother's trying to make because I'm sure as a linguist he appreciates the differences in languages. I'm someone who knows multiple languages and I wouldn't make that point either because I understand what a false friend is. Just because two words sound the same doesn't mean they are the same. So in the same way that Muslims aren't crying out, Allah is a mouse, they aren't crying that, they're shouting that Allah is great. Yeah? In the same way, in the same way, in the same way, in the same way, just because something sounds like Muhammad doesn't mean that it's Muhammad. I don't okay. think actually get anything one you further. want to add yeah, to that. The thing I would, if you believe that the Torah is tarif, is corrupted as a Muslim, yeah, it makes absolutely no sense to go to the Torah and to prove your religion from something that you already believe is corrupted. Absolutely. So if you're a Muslim, mate, 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 just come on. Keep going, bro. Bob believes Don't, 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 don't invite him in. I'm going to go and talk to this heckler soon. I'll go, he'll have his day in court. You continue, you continue. So my point is, if you're a Muslim and you believe the Torah hasn't been corrupted, then Mazel Tov. Verify and validate your own religion all you like from my religion. I'm happy with yeah. that. If you if you believe my religion hasn't been corrupted and you want to say, look, my book talks about Abraham and your book talks about Abraham, isn't that great? Fantastic. If you think my book has been contaminated and corrupted, why on earth would you use it to try and validate and verify your own religion? Yeah. And this is one of the things I really don't get. And what it becomes, it becomes selective. Then you start saying, well, the bits that validate my religion they're kosher, they're halal, yeah. but the bits that don't validate my religion, like which um, which of the sons was sacrificed, yeah. well then that's corrupted. Yeah. It's like, who are it's you to decide? It's subjective reasoning, exactly. isn't it? And it's like, it's, it's, it's self-validating reasoning that isn't objective. Because they, they launch the same criticism against Christians, um, and, and, and the reality is that there's absolutely no evidence at all, not, none has been provided of an Islamic injil. No, no evidence. It's just a claim in the Quran, unsubstantiated. It's floating around in the Afira with nothing to concrete to, to history. And, and same with their accusations of the Torah. There's absolutely no evidence of a Islamic Torah. It's a claim that he's made. It hangs there in the Afira, and there's zero evidence to link it to history. And if you go further, but, than but that. am I right in understanding that Isaiah and the Song of Solomon's are not properly the Torah? So yeah, you have within you have basically the prophets and the five books of Moses. Right. Yeah. So, so which one's the collectively, Torah? collectively, 
all of them are often referred to as Torah, but yeah. technically... I have a question. One second. Why second. don't you ask him what he believes one about Jesus? One second. Yeah. We can do that, but he probably knows my belief in he Jesus. He even denies Jesus. Yeah, so, 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 to... Within the... the we, technically, <laughs> the Torah is the five books of Moses. Yeah. Um, anything that came later is collectively called the Tanakh, but it's the prophets and the writings. Right. Um, so, so the Quran claims that Muhammad is mentioned in the Torah, and Isaiah and the Song of Solomon's are not even the Torah. <laughs> this is kind of baffling logic, I find. Um, so, so thank you so much for for clarifying those points. Um, as far as I'm concerned, if there's anything more you want to add, I'll, I'll, I'll let you say, and then if you want to move so, on to another topic, I'd, I'd like to. So, that, so yeah. that one final thing which I would like to, to say to the Muslims. So when you are judging negatively either the Torah, for my book, or the Injil, the Gospels for my Christian friends, look at Muhammad's own behavior. Now, I may be mistaken, but I believe that Muhammad told the Jewish community to be judged from the Torah because this is the book from I've Allah. That's what I've read in the Quran. Well. Yeah, and so I've read that. So if, if Muhammad recognized something as coming from from um, Allah, then who are you to say it's being corrupted? And yeah. even amongst Muslim commentators, the understanding of what corrupted means is there's either a literal corruption, either the words themselves were changed, yeah. or there's a intellectual corruption I where you the commentary on the verses. Yeah. So how 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 it's Jews behave? The verses, yeah. And so Jews today, most of them rebel up against the Torah. Most Jews yeah. are not observant of the law, yeah. and many Jews reject what we believe we're bound to, which is the oral law. Yeah. And so Orthodox Jews today will say that there are Jews alive that corrupt the meaning of the words. So if Muhammad says that, that's not a problem for Jews. But when you start to say that the words themselves have been corrupted well there's no evidence for that it's what you're saying yeah. we have Torah scrolls which are older don't than Islam itself yeah. and yeah, they totally. don't corrupt it and whether you go to the Septuagint whether you go to any of the 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 older Dead Sea Scrolls they all kind of confirm the same thing yep. and they they show that actually it's highly unlikely that at the time of Muhammad there was it's almost impro it's almost impossible that at the time of Muhammad there was somehow a different sort of Torah which the Muslims somehow had and then they lost it and then it was completely forgotten. It, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's nonsense. I mean, it, it is nonsense because the, 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 the whole logic um, depends upon, particularly from the New Testament perspective, because I'm not doing if you're aware of this, but Christians were copying and recopying the New Testament ravidly and rapidly. It's, called what, it's what scholars call the tenacity of the text. So, you know, Christians were meeting someone with a text and they were copying it down and then they were taking it back home and then other Christians would see that they've got a copy of the text and they would copy it and then they would take it somewhere else. And everyone was just copying and there was no central control. Um, and which explains why there are so ma many variants between the texts, which there most certainly are. But for someone to corrupt that text to such a degree that the original Islamic message is lost and then the text that we have it as it is today, which is actually more uniform than different, um, requires that someone would be able to take control of every single manuscript that this uh, subversive, persecuted community made um, and then rewrite it very early, this is all very early, um, and then and then impose a new doctrine onto this first community and they had to do that incredibly quickly and there's just no historical evidence for that claim whatsoever so from my point of view and I'm only speaking for myself the Quran is making claims and Muslims are making claims that are counterfactual to the evidence and if the Quran is making claims that are counterfactual and Muslims are making claims that are counterfactual either one or both is wrong. If the one is wrong and the other is right, then there needs to be some kind of reformation in the understanding of Islam. If the other is wrong and the, fo the, the further <coughs> is right, one, well, you can't. If the, the Quran is wrong, then the Muslim scholars also have to be wrong. But if the Quran is wrong, then it's not from Allah. I'll leave it to you to decide. We, um, we're going to reenact the handshake because uh, JC didn't get it on the first time. So there you go. <laughs> There's a handshake. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, did you get it as well? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah.